Holy shit! Yo, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it's your scientist and today I am back with another science experiment for you guys. Now I know I'm not in my traditional setting for any it's your scientist experiments, which creates a significantly more risky scenario, but I'm a professional scientist so we're gonna be fine. Even though I don't have my lab coat, I don't have any safety glasses, and um, we're in a random person's Airbnb. Hopefully they don't watch this. I also still have a cough, which really doesn't want to go away, so I'm, I should probably go to the doctor. But anyways, what we are going to be doing today is the elephant toothpaste experiment. Now, if you guys haven't seen this before, it's basically you mix a bunch of chemicals together and it shoots out or like oozes out, depending on how you do it. It either shoots or oozes. We're gonna figure out which one it's gonna do. What we're gonna do is try that out, see if we can replicate it. We're gonna do it in a bunch of different bottles so that we can see if that affects the experiment in different ways. And uh, we've got different chemicals, so we're gonna mix a couple different chemicals together and see what happens when we do that because it's an experiment and we're trying to see what happens. That was kinda self-explanatory. Anyways, let me explain to you guys how this works. So there are two different versions of the elephant toothpaste experiment. One is the at-home version and the second is the lab version. Now I couldn't get my hands on all the necessary ingredients to complete the lab version. Plus, since we're not technically in a lab, I decided to go with like a half lab version. So first I'm gonna go through the ingredients needed for the at-home version so that you guys can try this as well. Most of these, you know what? I'm sure I can find like a shitty lab coat in here. Feel like a priest. Uh, it's not so bad. When I'm down here, I kind of look sciencey. So the first and definitely the weirdest ingredient of all is probably the one that you're most likely gonna have to go out and buy, and that is dry yeast. Second, which you're probably gonna have in the house, is water. Third is liquid dishwashing soap. The next ingredient, which isn't absolutely necessary, it just makes it look a lot more cool, is food coloring. So I've got a bunch of different colors here, which we're gonna use. Second last thing you guys are gonna need is bottles. So uh, I've got a bunch of different types of bottles here. I've got water bottles, I've got like a uh, glass, that's what this is, glass bottles. I've got a giant Pepsi bottle, which I'm gonna empty out. I've got a few different bottles so that we can see how each bottle affects the interaction. Basically what you want from any of the bottles is a small neck because that's gonna make all of the foam condense in one spot and make it more likely to shoot out the top. Last, but definitely not least, actually this is probably the most important part of the entire reaction is hydrogen peroxide. So we have two different types of hydrogen peroxide. This is what you would use for the at-home version. It's 3%, 6% works as well. 6% I think is a little bit better, but I couldn't find any 6%. So we're gonna try it with 3% and see what happens. The second one is 35% hydrogen peroxide, which is called food grade. I don't really know what that means. I don't, you're not supposed to eat it, so I don't know why they call it food grade. It's a lot more difficult to get your hands on, and it is what you would use in the lab version. Basically the main difference in the lab version versus the at-home version is as as opposed to using dry yeast, you're using a sodium... Nope. You're using... You're using a saturated solution of potassium iodide. What that is, I have no idea. But I tried to get my hands on it and I had no luck. I have to like set up some US shipping address so that I can get it shipped to there and then I go pick it up and all that stuff. Which, you know, I just didn't have the opportunity to do. But if you guys want to see me try that, be sure to smash that thumbs up button right now and then maybe we'll do a part two where we get all the necessary ingredients and we go back to the Itzy Scientist lab to perform the lab version of elephant toothpaste. Also guys, safety is number one priority and so I have uh, these purple gloves here. But yeah, now that you guys have seen that, I'm gonna get ready, we're gonna get steady and we're gonna start this experimenty. Okay, so for the first step, all you're gonna need is some warm water and the yeast that I showed you guys earlier. So what you're gonna do for this step is fill up about three tablespoons, which equals to around 45 milliliters of warm water, put that into a cup, and then take a scoop of dry yeast and put that in the cup as well. Then you just gotta let it sit for a little bit, mix together, and that is going to act as the catalyst for your reaction. So there is your dry yeast. Now I'm not really sure how much we're supposed to add, so let's just go with this much for now. Okay, I'm done with this stupid lab coat. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit for a little bit longer and we're gonna move on to step number two. Okay, for step number two, you're gonna mix the hydrogen peroxide, wish, wish your dish show. Okay, for step number two, you're gonna mix, I can't speak. Okay, for step number two, you're gonna mix some of the hydrogen per, 
Okay, for step number two, you're gonna mix some of the hydrogen peroxide with your dish soap and food coloring and put that in a bottle. God. Okay guys, so we've done everything we need to so far. It's a really easy experiment to set up, so you guys can definitely try this out at home. And let me know if it works for you. If you do it, try filming it and sending it to me on Twitter. If you guys don't already follow me on Twitter, it's at It's Your Boy. So yeah, if you guys try it out, be sure to let me know how it goes. And if you manage to get a video, that would be really cool too. So the final step in the experiment is we're gonna take this concoction here, we're gonna set it down and just add the yeast mixture we created earlier into our hydrogen peroxide concoction. Okay. The moment of truth. This is the first attempt at the experiment. Oh, it's coming up. It's coming up. Uh, oh shit, it actually worked. Yo, that's dope. All right, so this is the first attempt. I definitely think we can improve upon this, but it worked. And that is a start. So we know that the chemical reaction works. We just want it to work a lot better so that it like literally just goes poof. It looks like a, like a, anyways, we want it to just explode at the top, okay? Okay guys, we are ready for attempt number two. Basically this time I put a little bit more yeast, I put a little bit more hydrogen peroxide and we've got a different bottle. So this bottle here is a glass bottle. Um, so we'll see if that makes it any different. And then on the next try, we are gonna go with the 35% hydrogen peroxide, which I feel like is going to give us a significantly more intense reaction. But I wanted to try this one out first. So let's see what happens. Oh my god, that went out so perfectly even. I feel like that one worked a little bit better. So when I move on to the 35% hydrogen peroxide, I'm definitely gonna go with more yeast and more hydrogen peroxide because we're trying to get this to just go boom, 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 boom. Jesus Christ. Okay guys, this is the third attempt. I've added this here, 35% food grade, 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide. We put green food coloring in this time, you know, just because I like to keep it fresh for you guys. I like to change it up. So we've done red, we've done blue, now we're gonna, <clears throat> now we're gonna try green. Green, you know, it's the, it's the color of the Irish. Hopefully that gives us the luck of the Irish and this works out perfectly. We've got our yeast mixture here. Let's give it a shot. All right, guys. Come on. Holy shit! Holy shit! Fam! Oh my god, it worked perfectly! It shot all over my hands! I'm actually kind of nervous right now because you're not supposed to get this on your hands. I just didn't think it was gonna work that well! That was nuts! Oh my god! Yo, I'm so amped! Oh my god, that was dope. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up. We're gonna do it again And I'm gonna try and get a close-up angle for you guys so you can really see it as it happens Okay, this is working so much better than I was expecting I thought it would take me at least like 15 attempts to make this work properly and I honestly thought it might still not happen I think I was I think I was a little bit pessimistic because of all the tries it took me last time I tried to do a science experiment, but I am so happy that this worked out right away and I really want to try and get like a dope ass slow-mo for you guys right now. So I've set the camera up so that the lighting is at its absolute finest. I'm gonna put the camera as close as I can to the actual reaction so that you guys can get the best view of it possible and I may be risking my camera, guys. So what I need you to do right now to help make sure that my camera survives and even if it doesn't, at least it's worthwhile because you guys enjoyed the video. Please let me know you enjoyed it and please show me some support for doing this risky ass move right now by smashing that thumbs up button. Just scroll on down, hit it right now. If we could get over one like on this video, that would be absolutely amazing. Now, without any further ado, let's give it a shot. Okay guys, this is the moment of truth. I'm about to add it in. Oh fuck. Yo, I'm actually tripping balls right now. The last time I wasn't expecting it, so there was no like buildup of anxiety and nervousness. Now, big time. Guys, if you haven't already, go smash that thumbs up button. Oh, okay, let's go, let's go. I can do this, I can do this. Dude, that is amazing. That was like a perfectly controlled one. It didn't shoot too high, which was good because it actually kept it all in one confined area. So I don't have too much cleanup. It's all within the one little container that I set up. Now I just have to check back and make sure we got the shot we were looking for. Hopefully I can do a sick ass slow motion for you guys. So let's check it out.
Guys, I honestly can't believe how well this is working out. Compared to my last experiment, this is just such a breeze. I am so happy right now. You can probably tell by the giant smile on my face, but I just wanna keep on doing it because it looks so cool. The difference was definitely the 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide. So if you guys are gonna try this at home and you can get your hands on some 35%, I would definitely recommend doing it because it's way, way cooler, but be a lot more careful with it because obviously it's way, way more powerful than when you're using the three or the 6% hydrogen peroxide. But like I said, guys, I honestly can't get enough of this. So let's go for a round what is it, five? I don't even know, I'm losing track. This time, we are gonna use the giant Pepsi bottle. Let's see what happens. All right, guys, here goes nothing. <sighs> Holy shit! <gasps> Yo, that was a shot. That went so high up. Oh my God. Fortunately, you guys can see it on this camera angle, but I got a second one so you guys can see it perfectly. That was sick. Yo, that's cool. Holy shit. Hmm. Honestly, I would say using the two liter bottle is probably the best idea I've had yet because there's so much room inside of it that it doesn't shoot too much foam out of it, but the foam that it does shoot out shoots straight up. So it worked out really well because again, not too much cleanup and you know, it's your scientist. I like to do experiments. I don't like to clean up experiments. So if I can avoid that, that's always an added benefit. But let's take a closer look at this because I've just been doing the experiment. I wanna analyze it a little bit more. Oh, whoa, that's crazy. Okay, obviously you guys can't feel this as well, but the bottle, when you touch it, is really, really warm. I think I read about this earlier. When the hydrogen peroxide and the yeast react, they actually create heat. I'm not entirely sure why, but I can definitely feel it. Yeah, like the bottle is straight up warm. All right, I'm gonna touch the actual liquid foam that came out. Hopefully I don't die, but I really, really wanna see what it feels like. Okay. All right, I'm washing my hand, I'm washing my hand. Hey, All right, if you find out that my hands burned off or like something happened to my fingers in the next few weeks, you know why, but so far, so good. I cleaned it off. I'm probably gonna clean it off a little bit better in a second, but the foam itself actually feels kind of warm too. Other than that, it feels pretty regular. Just kind of like, like foam or soap that you would use. Like, you know when you use a hand soap that's really, really foamy? It feels kind of like that, just warmer. Okay, the squad got back from their little shopping trip. They're here, they are ready to see It's Your Scientist kill it, because that's what I'm about to do. I'm are you ready, ready yeah. for it? Oh! Yeah, that's what I need. Oh, shit! <laughs> Yo! Okay, basically right now guys, what we have is 35% hydrogen peroxide in here. This is shit you gotta order special. This is 3%, this is what you get at the store. This is special edition hydrogen peroxide. We've got a little bit of soap. We've got a little bit of food coloring to make it look nice. Did you make that up or did you actually order this? Yeah, I straight up ordered it. Wow, okay, cool. And then what we are adding here is dry yeast mixed with warm water. Oh, right. So I've done this a few times. It worked every other time, but if it doesn't work this time, it's because Ryan tried to do bottle flip <laughs> challenge with the hydrogen peroxide bottle. Right, so here goes blame him. Ding. Are you guys ready? Ding, ding, ding. We'll find out. Stop. Don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. Wash your hand, wash your hand. Why, why? Wash your hand. Why? Why? Because you're not supposed to put hydrogen peroxide 35% on your finger. Oh. Why? Am I gonna die? It's not, read it, bro. <laughs> it's not meant for skin? Yeah, avoid <laughs> contact with skin. I well, don't your hand, bro. Then, then, why does say, then why does it say, put it on my head, dude? <laughs> <laughs> That's what oh. I did. It's warm as fuck. It's warm, yeah. Not only does it create the foam that shoots out the top, but, oh, but it also generates heat. An exothermic reaction. Exactly. Honestly, when you, when you, obviously, when you put the hydrogen peroxide in the in the water bottle, it explodes. Obviously, what the this guy's not even speaking English. He said explodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Interesting. But now I fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Time to clean up. I'm gonna wait to do the outro until the morning because the lighting is so shit right now.
See you then. All right, guys, that is it for today's It's a Scientist episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also, if you guys have any suggestions for other experiments that It's a Scientist should take on, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Toodles! Thank <laughs> you.